some of these South American anthems uh, do seem to take an eternity. I'm going to bring Billy McNeil in straight away. And, Billy, the major talking point here, the dropping of the Scottish captain, Graham Souness. Well, I think the reason for that, John, obviously, we're in a dramatic situation here. We need to win one match. Alec Ferguson obviously feels he wasn't getting enough from midfield and he's taken quite a dramatic step in leaving out the captain. But uh, don't forget, John, that we did exactly the same thing in Spain when we dropped Danny McGrain. It's nothing new for us. Well, Scotland have, in fact, made four changes from the side beaten by West Germany. Basically, it's the same side defensively, except Arthur Alberston has come in in place of Maurice Malpass. But in midfield, both Graham Souness and Eamon Bannon are left out. Paul McStay is preferred to Souness, and Paul Sterrick returns to the side, along with Everton's Graham Sharp, who starts a World Cup match here for the first time. And there's no place even on the substitutes bench for the Scottish captain, Graham Souness. And incidentally, Uruguay have also made four changes, and it looks as though they're adopting a very attacking policy as well. The Uruguayan changes, of course, they've been forced to leave out uh, their big captain, Bossio, who was sent off in the game against Denmark. Also out of the side are midfielder Saralegi and strikers Alza Mendy and Jorge da Silva. Something of a surprise, that one. So Venancio Ramos there and Jorge Barrios both come into the side. So does Wilmar Cabrera. And this is the most attacking side that has been chosen by the Uruguayan manager, Omar Boras. The scene really is set for a fiery cracker here, isn't it, Billy? Well, the thing about Uruguay, John, you know, so far I've seen them, they, they've tried to play football and tried to go forward. They're a bit indisciplined at the back, and obviously we saw Bosch have been sent off. But uh, I think they're an attacking side. It surprises me just a little bit that uh, they left out the Silva. I was very impressed with him in the previous matches. So what a moment here for Graham Sharp of Everton, who's had such a marvellous season, of course, for his club. David Neri, the other man in your picture there, hoping to celebrate his 30th birthday, which was yesterday, in style here, and he's winning his 30th cap as well. And interesting that on the substitutes bench, Scotland have lined up the Charlie Nicholas. So Nicholas has overcome that very bad ankle injury. The ligaments were torn in the first match played here against Denmark. So Nicholas is on the bench, but Graham Souness isn't. The referee today, by the way, is a Frenchman. And there you see the picture of the Uruguayan captain, Rodriguez, who's had an abdominal injury. He's the goalkeeper. He's unable to start the game. But Alzamendi, who scored against West Germany, and Da Silva are both substitutes today. Jim Leighton has been quite magnificent for Scotland in the two matches that played so far. And uh, interestingly, Billy, I think you once loaned him out from Aberdeen to a junior club, didn't you? Well, that's right. I was at Aberdeen when Jim came, and uh, we had to have three, four goalkeepers at the time, and Jim went out to a Highland League club, and uh, from then he's developed into first-class goalkeeper. I think this World Cup has established him at uh, inter full international level, and by that I mean world stuff. Jim Leighton today winning his 29th cap. The referee today is Joel Keeney of France, who incidentally was involved in a tremendous dispute at the French Cup final this year. Let's hope uh, there aren't too many disputes today. A friendly handshake before the start of the game with Enzo Francescoli, the Uruguayan star, without doubt, the man who's going to move to Racing Club of Paris next season for a lot of pesos. It's a gloriously bright day here in Neza, the climate, uh, one has to say, is changeable in this uh, city on the outskirts of Mexico City itself. We've had thunderstorms, lightning, rain, just about everything thrown at us in Neza. But thankfully today, it's nice, it's warm, but it's not a stifling heat, uh, Billy, and I think that Scotland should be able to cope with the conditions. Yeah, I just wonder, John, if the conditions really mean all that much, because I think the passion is there for the Scots to win today, and, you know, I would certainly back them. Well, you've promised to sing uh, Flower of Scotland at the end of the match, if that happens. I hope you're singing. I think I'll have plenty of company, John, if the, the game goes right. Away we go. The vital match, then, uh, in the group. Scotland know exactly what they have to do. They have to win to qualify for a game against Argentina at Puebla next Monday. Uruguay only need a draw. This is Richard Goff. The man attracting a great deal of interest uh, down south. And the long ball there looking for Sturrock. Steve Nicholl 
beaten to it just with Diogo getting a foot in. Here's Strachan and uh, bundled over the first free kick of the game. I thought for one moment the referee was going to reach for a yellow card in the first minute. I've in fact have a funny feeling he is. Strachan is prostrate and he's sent off. What an astonishing start to the game within the first 60 seconds of the match. Uruguay are down to 10 men. Well, they had Bossio, their captain, sent off against Denmark. And the French referee here is obviously not going to stand any nonsense whatsoever. Quite extraordinary scenes here. Whistles all around the ground. Little Batista is uh, being comforted by some of his colleagues here. Stretcher is being called for for Gordon Strachan. We always feared, Billy, that this was going to be a tempestuous occasion, but to see Batista set off in the first 60 seconds has gone beyond any expectations anybody could have. Well, we knew this referee was picked, uh, John, for the, the way he handles matches, and certainly he's not chose to sidestep anything. He thought that the, the challenge was such a bad one, he had no option to send him off, and off he goes. The smallest man on the pitch is Strachan, and uh, Batista is about half an inch taller. They clashed. The French referee decided... I'm, I'm astonished, actually. I thought it might have been a yellow card, but to, to produce a red card in the first minute of a World Cup match is... Well, it must, must be unprecedented. Well, I'll be honest, John. I thought he made a mistake when he pulled the red card out, but there you are. Strachan's up and OK. So it's Scotland's 11 against Uruguay's 10 for 89 minutes. And the free kick taken, it went beyond Goff, and uh, he would have been, I think, uh, no, he wouldn't have been offside. And the referee's fallen over. I don't remember as much incident in the first uh, 60 seconds, two minutes of a game than this one. Billy, I must ask you, how is this going to affect the Uruguayans? Because we saw that they went to pieces against Denmark when they lost their captain then. Well, it must affect them, John. I mean, it's such a dramatic step for a referee to take his L in the game. It's obviously got to have an unsettling effect on the Uruguayans. Um, and don't forget, as a Scotsman, John, I'm quite pleased to see it go that way. Well, Alex Ferguson has opted for a really attacking formation here, bringing Graham Sharp in for the first time and restoring Paul Sturrock after his injury. Uh, let's see now if uh, Scotland can capitalise on this early fortune for them and great misfortune for Uruguay. Strachan is on the ball. He looks none the worse for wear after that challenge. He's uh, looking down the middle here for Paul Sturrock. And a very sloppy back pass to Alves, the goalkeeper, making him stretch. Unnerving start for a side you cannot imagine. In fact, the Uruguayan manager Omar Boras said after the uh, Denmark game that his country's players didn't have the capability to deal with situations when they were down to 10 men. They still wanted to play attacking football and couldn't cope. Let's see how they cope here. Still under five minutes gone in this game, would you believe? McStay, nice ball through for Steve Nicholl. They're drilling that one out there and looking for Sharp. Scotland have a throw. South America are represented other than on the pitch here today by the linesman on that far side, who's from Colombia. And uh, Uruguay have a free kick now. Exactly five minutes gone here in Neza. Scotland nil, Uruguay nil. Uruguay's Batista sent off in the first minute. Well, you can uh, guarantee now that Uruguay will uh, defend mightily. Well, they just require one point. Scotland need two. Tactic 
tactics of both sides formed from the start. This is Cabrera. Now Ramos. He's an exciting young player, and he's played a lovely ball out to, to that far side. There's uh, Santin, who looks as though he'd been brought down, spun up again to his feet, but Neri makes a good interception. Can't find Sharp, though. The Uruguayans are a neat football inside. Goff charges Santin over. And uh, there's no yellow card for the Dundee United defender. Santin stays on the ground, looking for treatment. And already, I think, Billy, we've seen indications that this is going to be quite a, a tempestuous affair. You often find, John, when the referee makes such a dramatic move as he's done in this match, he, he, he looks to even up the balance somewhere. And I think this is what the Uruguayans will be trying to achieve. They'll be, they'll be acting and falling down and playing, looking to get some of the Scottish players into trouble. Free kick uh, to Uruguay then. Ramos uh, played it back to Barrios. Now sent in. Barrios out on that uh, far side again. They're stroking the ball around quite nicely. And Scotland finding it difficult to get possession uh, from the ten men. Here's Diogo, who will uh, drive in a rather woeful shot. Diogo, who has uh, one yellow card as well, so the Uruguayans have got quite a collection of cards here. Scotland crossing the halfway line, no goals here in Neza. But just a reminder for anybody who might just have come in, amazingly, Uruguay already down to ten men, with their left-back Batista sends off. This is Francesco Lee. Oh, lovely skill from Francesco Lee. They certainly have to watch him. He's still going. And a very timely intervention once again by Willie Miller. It's his forte, all right. Francesco Lee once more. Very involved. And uh, Leighton trying to scramble down for that one. It didn't look to have much power, but a warning there of Francesco Lee's pace, his power, and his dribbling skills. He's undoubtedly very talented, John. I think at the moment we're just a little bit unsettled. I think the ordinary off is unsettled us as much as it has the Uruguayans at the moment. We've got to settle down, get a composure back and start getting the passes going. Miller, the captain for Scotland today in the absence of Sunes. Nickel, and that's a good ball down the line for Sterek. Gutierrez, a strong tackle. They're claiming the throw in Uruguay. The referee's going to let them have it. So Arthur Albiston and Nickel try to work uh, an opening. The crossover to the far side. Goff got up. Oh, and a slight miskick inside the area there by Graham Sharp. Otherwise, Scotland would have been on the score sheet. That was a, a definite half chance, John. It really was. here again and now Barrios who is a very good and skillful player playing his first game of these World Cup finals he's had an ankle injury Warner slip there and Strachan almost nicking it away and here is Strachan now and the Scotland have got uh, plenty of men up in this attack here's Paul Sterrick oh a scything tackle which he did well to avoid and Uruguay have conceded a corner kick. But there again, we saw a really lunging tackle. And if Sturrock had been another yard inside, uh, or just inside the area, that would have been a penalty, I think. I think what's very important, John, we've got, we've got to keep our composure. We've not got to get drawn into a physical game. We've got to get passes going. So Scotland have a sight of Uruguay's goal. A Strachan It's the corner round about the penalty spot. It was away easily, though. Now Arthur Albiston brought in for his attacking uh, skills. Not a good ball this time, though, to his Manchester United colleague. And Uruguay counter-attack through Ramos, but he's got no support at the moment. 
Pulls it up well low and uh, gets the cross in and Francescoli was coming in. And although there were only two Uruguayans up there in attack, they managed to create an opening. But again, we saw that there can be danger to Scotland from these quick breaks. And Ramos did well for his country then. It's the same Senor Ramos, Ramos who will take the corner. Now Uruguay do throw a four men forward and a clear header as well coming in from Wilma Cabrera. He perhaps should have been able to keep it down a little better. I'll tell you what, John, I think we could do without the excitement at the, the Scottish end. I'd much prefer to see the other end. But it, it lets us see the threat of these Uruguayans. Alberston just knocking the ball out of play and a few hoots going up around the ground. Still no goals here. This is the uh, last of the games played in uh, Neza. And wrestled to the ground there by McStay was Cabrera. Barrios takes it quickly. Cabrera challenged by Nickel. And a good intervention here by McStay, who's been brought into the side in place of Graham Souness. Strachan, nice little back header. Goff joins the attack. Now Neri. And Roy Aitken. It's cut out, but only as far as Strachan. Even against these ten men, Scotland not finding it easy to work the openings. Cabrera and ceremoniously bundled over by Goff, and that's the second time that uh, Goff has conceded a free kick. I think the Uruguayans impeaching the French referee to take sterner action against the Dundee United fullback. There is actually a feeling, Billy, isn't there, that Richard Goff might not be playing in his best position here. Well, I've always preferred him and as a centre back. Looks very good potential there, John, but uh, he's a very good player. Cescoli and uh, Ramos in the end have to play the ball uh, back to Santin. Diogo, now Ramos once more, who looks uh, a dangerously exciting player, Francio Ramos. And there'll be a free kick here to Uruguay, obstruction. Jim Layton looked anxiously on. And uh, we've seen in the last couple of days how powerfully some of these fellas can shoot. The second goal by Brazil yesterday down in Guadalajara was uh, quite the most spectacular we've seen so far. And it was from uh, this sort of distance. There are four Uruguayans there sorting things out. The captain Barrios looks as though he's going to tee somebody up. Back leaves it for Francescoli, who hoofs it straight into the crowd. Well, the sensational start to this game was, of course, the first minute sending off of Jose Batista. And Ian St. John back in London, I think we can have a closer look at that. Well, that's right, John. Uh, the ball was played to Gordon Strachan, and they, Batista came flying in behind him. I mean, he had no chance of getting the ball. It was a really vicious tackle. Thanks very much, Ian. Well, yes, Strachan uh, certainly polaxed in that first minute. I think the only surprise here was that it was a red card and not a yellow card produced so early in the game. However, Batista is off, and that ought to be to Scotland's advantage. Not a good ball. Straight to the foot of uh, Steve Nicholl, who wants to play it quickly out to that far side. And Sturrock giving chase, but forlornly. So far, Billy, Uruguay seems to be handling the situation quite well. They're handling it differently from they did against Denmark, John. They're leaving one player up front, 
the closing up midfield and they're looking very very compact at the back all that can change with a goal let's see if Arthur Alviston can conjure something up looking on that far side for Graham Sharp who's so adept in the air of course and a good firm positive header from Sharp but he uh, didn't find another blue shirt Crossed flanks for the moment. Meanwhile, in the other game in this group, we understand from Carretero that there is no score between Denmark and West Germany. So we await the first goal in both matches in the group. And the prize for the winners here today is a game against Argentina in Puebla. Scotland against Argentina would be some occasion. And as you can imagine, down in, down in South America, they reckon that Uruguay against Argentina would be a mighty confrontation. This looks promising with McStay. Struck it inside the area. He scored from that sort of position against West Germany. This time, good defending means Scotland have a corner. Strachan, who's got four goals for his country, strolls over to take the corner kick. When you look down the list of Scottish goal scorers, it's not too impressive. Charlie Nicholas, who's the substitute today, has five. Archibald and Strachan, four apiece. Sturrock and McStay, three apiece. That's looped over and a slip by Francesco Lee. Uh, he regained his feet and uh, everybody bar Jim Layton is in Uruguay's half let's see what Strachan can do here good ball inside the area as well Aitken drives it across oh that's a marvellous save from Nicol the Liverpool man side footed it when perhaps he might have been better advised to blast it but it's very easy to say that from here Alves spread himself well it was a lovely piece of football, John, but uh, unfortunately it was a very, very good save from the goalkeeper. But a very definite chance missed there. Funny, we should just be talking about uh, goal scorers and Steve Nicol yet to register his first for Scotland. What a chance he had then. Gutierrez finding Francesco Lee, whose control this time isn't as good as it should have been. Now Paul McStay. And McStay's been brought in here to do a specific job, and so far I think he's made a very good start to this match. It does seem a little strange to see a Scotland side uh, without Graham Souness, their natural leader. But in all honesty, he's perhaps not played as well in the opening two matches as uh, certainly he would have liked. And that's going to be a free kick against Nicol. Oh, dear me, the Uruguayan goes down as though he's been felled. And Ramos is clutching his head, and I can't honestly see why he stayed down. The Uruguayan captain, Barrios, complaining bitterly to the French referee. I hope his French is good. referee is going to have to differentiate between genuine um, agony and real acts of agony John this is going to be one of the problems yes a few of them have their equity cards and uh, then a free kick is given to Uruguay I'll be interested in a free kick count I think uh, Uruguay have certainly had more than Scotland might seem surprising after that first minute sending off of Batista. Uruguay only too happy to slow things down. They even had to have a committee decision then as to who was going to take the free kick. Two 
20 minutes gone here in Neza. Scotland nil, Uruguay nil. And uh, up there was Cabrera. And it just went hopelessly beyond everybody. The first goal could be so important in this match. I'm sure that uh, if Scotland could score it, they'd be uh, jubilant and would really sense an opportunity to go through to the next round. But at the moment, Uruguay are denying them uh, many opportunities. Just that real chance for Steve Nicola a few moments ago. Aitken, who's had a good World Cup. Down the line, Aitken goes for the return and gets there as well and uh, tries to tussle his way past the Uruguayan defender and in the opinion of the linesman from Colombia, he was uh, acting illegally there, so it's another free kick to Uruguay. sure it will encourage all Scots uh, when they remember that the last time these two countries met Scotland won by two goals to nil up at Hamden that was uh, about three years ago oh very bad pass this time by McStay he's given the ball away here oh and a thrilling shot really struck well that one by Sergio Santin Leighton handled it efficiently The Uruguayans have to get back, only Francescoli is not behind the ball. Strachan. He's got the skill to get past people, this time he uses Nickel wide. No goals here, Scotland nil, Uruguay nil. Scotland uh, perhaps enjoying the better of the possession at the moment, but they're not working in any openings. Ramos for Uruguay, who scored a lot of good late goals for them. Uh, he seems to have a knack of doing that. He scored the goals that brought them here, in fact. Once more, it's McStay who concedes the free kick this time. Seems to me, Billy, that the Uruguayans have learned something uh, from the Denmark game in how to play with ten men. I think so, John. They're much more composed. At the moment, they, they look a much more composed side than Scotland do. The wall retreats. And, uh, Gutierrez threatens. So does Ramos. And that's a bad ball back for Barrios. And Scotland won't mind so long as they keep taking free kicks like that all day. But don't forget the really important issue here is that Scotland must score at least one goal. They have to win. Strachan has been at his uh, best here when he's been running at defences. He's perhaps been Scotland's outstanding player so far in this World Cup. Nickel gets up well, but there's no one to receive his header inside. I think it's significant, John, that heavy challenge right away was on Gordon Strachan. I agree with you. I think he's had a first-class World Cup so far. the Scots would dearly like to emulate England's performance in getting through to the last 16 now let's charge them up a bit Northern Ireland sadly winging their way home this weekend but uh, they did themselves proud all right down in Guadalajara so the British interest here today though very much with Scotland uh, nice skill by Strachan, who's bundled over not once, but twice, by uh, Barrios. Who <laughs> I thought he was offering his number then to the uh, referee for taking. The referee didn't take up the option. I think Strachan can expect to bite uh, quite a lot of Mexican grass today. 
Yeah, there's no doubt about that at all, Free kick. Nicely done to Alberston. Obviously, a Manchester United ploy that one. And the little header was from uh, Paul Sturrock. Uruguay scrambled it behind the line. And uh, the Scottish flags always wave whenever Scotland have a position from which they might score. And they're waving around the stadium here at the moment. It's been a marvellous uh, Scottish presence, but there was a good Uruguayan presence in the penalty area then. Strachan won't uh, get that one. Diogo, big, forceful. Gets it away as far as Ramos. Handball by Olveston, uh, by uh, Ramos, in fact. Nickel now. Steve Nicholl has worked in the game so far. I think the one thing Scotland have suffered from has been a uh, lack of really good crosses from the flanks. I don't see him able to do that, and Graham Sharp must have that sort of service today. Francesca Lee takes it down superbly, confronts Neri. He's got uh, two Scottish shirts ahead of him. Now finds Santin, and there are two men over on the left as Francesca Lee holds off Willie Miller. Can't also hold off Aitken. Santin over on that far side. Good interception by Goff. Pereira. They're good at shielding the ball with their bodies all right. And uh, there's a deflection there. So Uruguay have a corner. The way the game's going just now, John, really I'm quite glad that uh, they're down to 10 men because they, ha they, they have played quite impressively. I just wonder what uh, Senor Batista is thinking at this moment as he sits alone, perhaps, in the dressing room. I don't even think the battle have been run yet, John, you know that. The corner will be taken by Ramos. 28 minutes gone. Uruguay's corner. Away by Sharp, doing his defensive chores as well as attacking ones. And Aitken does well for Scotland there. He twice got a foot in. Strachan is kicked again and again. And uh, he's not getting much protection from the referee at the moment, isn't Strachan? That was Gutierrez who let him know he was there. McStay. Aitken finds Sturrock. Goffland's support and goes for the return ball, which didn't come. Francesco is screening the ball so effectively, he won't be knocked off it. There are seven blue shirts ahead of uh, Ramos here. What on earth do Uruguay hope to achieve from this? Would only. Uh, and wonder but Ramos is still there with Francesca Lee and he's still there is Ramos and he almost got past the last of the seven Willie Miller and they have good skill there's Cabrera Francesca Lee Neri in the nick of time Graham seems to be hotting up a little at the moment Alberston of Manchester United and Scotland to Roy Aitken of Celtic. Now Strachan. And they'll be offside there against Sturrock. I think, uh, Billy, we've seen two sides of Uruguay already. We have seen the cynical side. We've also seen the very skillful side. Yeah, it's an unfortunate mixture they've got, John, because they've got some such good, skillful players, but they, they just don't seem to get the discipline right at all. One of the problems we've got at the moment is we've got four players marking one at the back and uh, we're giving them an awful lot of room in midfield. But still Scotland nil, Uruguay nil, half an hour gone here in Neza.
Ramos. And uh, Miller, a brave header there, as he was uh, being confronted by Pereira. The free kick uh, this time does go to Scotland. Willie Miller is uh, left lying prostrate on the ground. It was a very brave header. And the trademark of Willie Miller, really, is his reading of the game and his quite brilliant interceptions. Miller just picking himself up, but he's another for me who's had a very fine World Cup. Outstanding World Cup, John. A very, very strong defender, particularly run about the penalty here, a very good tackler. Here's Paul McStay. He can shoot as well, can McStay. Not this time. Oh, dearie me, Sterrick is brought, crashing down by a quite uh, dreadful challenge there and the yellow card is shown this time it's to Cabrera well he certainly caught him there it's the apologies immediately after the foul that get me John you know they, they really have a go and then they, they're all full of apologies a second later Cabrera one of those has been sent into the side Sterrick there is feeling the same hurt that Gordon Strachan felt in the first minute. Cabrera is a very physically strong lad. We watched him in training before the World Cup started. He put in an enormous amount of work. That's right. They're, they've got one or two tough lads out there, John. The referee has got quite a job on here. I think uh, one or two of the Scottish lads are calling for a bit more protection. Charlie Nicholas, by the way, is uh, just limbering up and down on the touchline. He knows what it's like uh, to get hurt. He was victim of a quite dreadful tackle by the Danish player in the first match, Berggren. But Charlie Nicholas has made something of a miraculous recovery to even uh, contemplate playing here as a substitute. Well, not surprisingly, Scotland got a free kick out of that, which they've taken. And I think that's going to go beyond Graham Sharp and out of play. And really, it was a, a bit of a waste. It was a waste, John. And we've got trouble again. Goodness knows why. I mean, there was nothing there. Graham Sharp went up to try and uh, head the ball back inside the area. The uh, Uruguayans surround the French referee, who tells them to get on with the game. This really is a terrible side to the South American nature. And the referee is backpedalling. It looks as though Cabrera wanted to give him one on the chin then. The captain, Barrios, has not been setting a good example. He's been chirping away at the referee from the very first minute. John, oh. it, it helps to waste time, you know. Every time they go to the referee, it adds a few seconds, or takes a few seconds off the clock, and I think this is what they're up to just now. It's nil-nil here. It's nil-nil in Carretero between West Germany and Denmark. The goal here would uh, really set this one alight if it's not already. Oh dear, this time it's Diogo who batters Steve Nickel down and then attempts to uh, put his sole of his boot in Nickel's chest. The referee this time decides that uh, punishment was sufficient with the free kick. Sterek, Diogo gives away a corner. And the other thing of course here is that it can unsettle the opposition without question. We've just seen another elbow used illegally by a Uruguayan. Unfortunately, the referee didn't see it. That's gone uh, just about beyond everybody. Almost touched back by Willie Miller on that far side. Goff for Scotland. And Scotland are just lifting it a little now. Just over ten minutes of the first half left. Sturrock. Aitken, back inside for Goff, and Scotland still have three men up inside the penalty area if they can get a telling cross in here. Aitken floats it towards Sharp, Gutierrez gets it away. He's a good player. Now McStay, a young man who will certainly remember this World Cup match. Neri. 
that's going to drift beyond everybody apart from the goalkeeper Alvarez not a good pass no we can't afford to give the ball away John at the moment I think we've got to perhaps go and commit them just a little bit more at the back we tended to play in, in midfield and not really get at the back four it's just worth reminding people at home of the substitutes that Alex Ferguson has got to choose from today he's got a, a wide player in David Cooper he's got a good midfield player in Jim Bett and two strikers Steve Archibald and Charlie Nicholas so the options are there Diogo takes the throw for Uruguay, who've weathered the storm well after losing Batista, their fullback, in the very first minute for a bad tackle on Gordon Strachan. Ramos will run at Nickel, and uh, he, he can't quite keep the ball in play. Arthur Albiston just did enough to nudge him away. Now Neri. How Scotland could do with a goal from him, like the one he produced against Brazil four years ago in Spain. Strachan, lovely ball, and he's found Sturrock in a little bit of space this time, and Scotland have plenty of men open. Here's a chance for Aitken, perhaps. His control certainly let him down then, but Scotland are here again with Nickel. There's only one man inside the penalty area, though. That's Richard Goff, who arrives and can't keep the header down. Just a little careless uh, mistake from Roy Aitken there. Oh, that, that was a real good chance that he had. A bit of control would have seen him all right. It would have been nice to see uh, Richard Goff get his fourth goal for his country. I know they still talk about one he once scored against England up at Hampden. Ramos has got away from McStay, he's chased by Alviston here. And Ramos, in possession, he does like to keep hold of the ball. That's perhaps uh, regarded as his failing, but he doesn't release it when he should. 38 minutes gone, Scotland nil, Uruguay nil. Scotland have to win. Uruguay only need a draw. And to be quite frank, if Uruguay uh, do go through, I almost dread to think what might happen in the match uh, against Argentina. Because uh, they can uh, put themselves about a bit as well. Here's Sterrett for Scotland, though. And uh, that is a woeful cross, really. That's a terrible waste. We have wasted some good opportunities, John, because we've gotten along that byline once or twice and we've finished with poor crosses, really. Looking at the substitute bench, I think uh, perhaps the second half we might see a change or two. Yes, Charlie Nicholas was uh, being described as the saviour of Scotland before these World Cup finals. There must be a chance of him coming on. There must also be a chance of David Cooper, I would have thought. The crowd are enjoying it anyway. They're still doing their human wave here, no matter what the score. I think they were all saying hello to mum then, in their own unique fashion. Diogo, on this uh, right-hand side, looked to be uh, just limping for a moment there, but I think he's all right. And the Uruguayans try to slow things down as often as possible. Huge kick, and Francesco is in chase. Leighton wasn't sure whether to come off his line or not. This fellow's dangerous in these situations. He won a penalty, don't forget, against Denmark. Nice little back flick here for Ramos. And Uruguay still only got three men up there, so it comes back to the captain, Barrios. And they took too long, really, about that. Uh, otherwise, there might have been a chance on. Here's Cabrera. Can't get past uh, Strachan, Leighton dives full length but can't stop the ball going out of play for a corner to Uruguay. There are five minutes of the first half left.
And uh, Uruguay, defensively minded, just have four men inside that penalty area against nine blue shirts of Scotland. In it comes, and it's uh, well away by Nickel. Uruguay regaining possession. This is Santin. Now Ramos, who run at Miller here. Scotland must be careful, but uh, again, it's a poor cross delivered, and the quality of crossing in this World Cup has left a lot to be desired. I just wonder, John, if he saw an opportunity to throw that one into the back post there, but certainly, as crosses go, it, it, it turned out poor quality. Well, the last time these two countries met in the World Cup was back in 1954 in Switzerland. I don't think really I ought to remind anybody living in Scotland of the score, but let me just say that Uruguay scored seven on that occasion. Safe to say they're not going to do that here. One goal for Scotland would suffice at the moment. Oh, dearie me, another very bad challenge. He caught him as he turned inside there, Paul McStay. And it was Cabrera who committed the sin. But uh, he's already been booked, Cabrera, but he survived that to that one. And Sturek battling there with uh, Barrios. Eventually, it's Acevedo who knocks it away. Under three minutes of the first half remain. But surely a little bit of stoppage time. Scotland build again, instigating the attack uh, this time with Alberston. Useful header away, comes to McStay. Oh dear, he, uh, I think he was caught in two minds there, thought of a shot perhaps initially, and in the end he played uh, a ball that he certainly won't be proud of. Well, at the moment, John, we need some inspiration. And as I mentioned earlier, looking at the players on the bench, we've got an actual winger. I think it's uh, it's tailor-made for a winger this game because there's a bit of room out on either side. They're a man short, and David Cooper's a lad who can cause problems by running at people. Well, Friday the 13th has got to be unlucky for someone here. And everybody's fingers crossed around me that it won't be Scotland. The moment though, no goals. It's a highly competitive match, is this one, to say the least. Barrios. Strong on the ball, uh, Jorge Barrios, who plays for Olympiakos, by the way, in Greece. Of course, just about all the Uruguayans play in uh, another country. Uh, rather fortunate little uh, deflection off the legs of McStay gave Nickel the chance to do something for Scotland but they've lost possession once more and we're inside the last minute of the first half with Ramos and Francescoli Owen Ramos here good play by Miller he's come across and done his covering work capably You know, John, if it wasn't for the, the cynical approach to the game, you, you would have grudging respect for these, these players, the ten men from the first minute, and they've played so well. well. Indeed, they played quite well at times in the game against Denmark. It's just that uh, they got caught out by two absolutely devastating strikers, Laudrup and Elkjar. We could do well, with those two players in the Scottish team just now, John. I think Manchester City could as well, Billy. There's the throw inside the area. Oh, nicely done by Ramos! And a chance for Diogo. It's the clearest opportunity Uruguay have created. Ramos nicked it back. In fact, the linesman, I think, had raised a flag anyway, but Diogo was uh, rather annoyed with himself that he didn't put that one much closer. Can you imagine what would have happened, John, if he'd have scored the goal there and the linesman had chopped it off?
So the closing seconds of the half. It's even in terms of goals. And I suppose you would have to say that Uruguay uh, take the credit for having uh, done so well with only ten men. But Scotland, uh, that must be a corner. So, uh, oh dearie me, the goalkeeper has just kicked the ball away from Strachan, who wanted to take the corner quickly. The referee will perhaps take that into consideration. Well, Uruguay scored on the stroke of half-time against Denmark. Wouldn't it be nice for Scotland if they could get one here? Strachan will cross it. Coming up is Willie Miller. Clear header, but right across the face of goal. And Santin. And now Ramos bring it away once more for Uruguay. Cabrera. Cabrera and Pereira. Very rhythmical. Now Francesco Lee. Oh, he's done well and turned inside McStay. Francesco Lee, so dangerous. Hit it to the near post. Leighton's reactions were good. But uh, it will be a corner. Francesco Lee might well have caught some goalkeepers unawares, but not Jim Leighton. The big scoreboard here tells us we've already played nearly 47 and a half minutes. Corner taken, oh, and a good fierce header by Cabrera, about a foot too high, and that is the end of the half. It's been certainly an absorbing half, even though there have been no goals. Uruguay, remember, had a player sent off in the first minute, Batista. Scotland haven't as yet capitalised, so half-time here in Neza, it's Scotland nil, Uruguay nil. Stay with us for the second half. Meanwhile, we'll take a break. So nil-nil with Scotland, it's really developing into quite a cliffhanger now. Surely Scotland are going to beat ten men, but are they? Ian St John, who's let out one strangled cry after another through that 45 minutes, in one of your more printable remarks, I have to say, was we're playing as if we had never played together before. Correct, correct. And I, I, don't, I don't mind saying that. We are playing. I cannot believe how badly Scotland are playing after having played against West Germany and played so well and against Denmark. And everybody said, what a great side we've got. They're playing like strangers out there against ten men, and if we don't win this one, that'll be the biggest disgrace ever, I think, in Scottish football. 89 minutes against ten men, and we, and we can't... We don't even look as if we can threaten them. I mean, I, I really think it's an appalling display by Scotland. I think what? that's right, but I think also you've got to give Uruguay a lot of, a lot of pluses. Uh, they've set their stall out, and they've certainly learned from the Denmark game how to contain and control, and they, they have actually played very well. Yes, the Scots haven't played very well, but... The Uruguayans have I'm taken the sting out of it, they've kept the ball, and they've looked dangerous on the break. So Mick, I'd like, them. I'd like you, sorry Brian, I'd like you to have a look with us now at that sending off incident, Batista sent off in the very first yeah. minute, which I was, mean, I mean, a sensational opening, his well, assault on... Uh, for me, like, I mean, the referees absolutely destroyed the game for me in the first minute. All right, it was a foul, but I didn't think it was that bad. I mean, and he sent the lad off, and for me, it spoiled the game. I, obviously, I want Scotland to win, don't get me wrong, but, uh, I mean, that, that's... Oh, that's absolutely ridiculous yeah. to send someone off. Obviously, he's been, uh, he's been told before, you've got a hard game here, you're going to have to get out of it from the start. And he sent someone off there for, for a bundle and a lad over in the first minute. I find that the referee's an imposter, in my view. I think yeah. we've, we've said from early on in the competition that referees can play a vital part in this whole competition. But, yes. And you but can unlike, see now they look as if they're maybe going to put Uruguay out of the competition altogether. But unlike what, what Brian said, the Uruguayans have done well. For me, I played in Uruguay in almost identical situation to this. All they do is they break the game up, mess the game, and it's bitty. You know, right. nothing flows, Brian. Honestly, um, well, they, take, nothing, a, they take, take all the minute. enjoyment out of sure, the game they because they keep stopping the game. But a f f to just to take a free kick, you know, oh, a goal it's, kick, it's and, and all those minutes, uh, all those minutes are building up. And we have created one chance really in the game, wasn't it? When, when Stevie Nichol had that chance. Uh, but one of the few times that we got down in the byline, little Sturrock, who I think is, at least has showed a little bit, got yeah. there, pulled it back. And really, you've got to say, well, Stevie, you've got to score there, so cover yourself in glory. 
And give the goalkeeper credit, good save, but dearie me, six right. yards out. But they have been there two or three times. So, before we go to another break, I, I would like to know what you think Alec Ferguson mm. is going to do at half-time and what changes he might conceivably have to make <laughs> now in the start of well, the second half. Well, I think young McStay is overawed by the whole thing and he's having a, a dreadful game. Uh, they've got to get somebody in there and I think they've got to play somebody up the front as well and keep the ball and knock it around and use the free player. We've got a free player. For God's sake, let us use him. You're getting a bit worried. I'm getting excited. <laughs> I think, I think, I think Let, let's have a little break and then we come back for some more uh, action. Let's hope Scotland can do it. We'll be right back. Tonight in Group B, e, Denmark and West Germany. Our commentator in Coretero is Jerry Harrison. Germany in white, Denmark are leading 1 0, and this is the goal. Olsen, Olsen still coming. Orton Olsen driving into the air, he goes down, it's a penalty. The Danish captain's run from the back has earned them a penalty two minutes before the half time break. Here's Olsen. So smooth. Manchester United. So 1-0 to Denmark there. Let's go back and hope that Scotland can uh, make amends from a poor first half at the start of the second half. Let's rejoin our commentators in Neza. It's Billy McNeil and first John Helm. Thank you, Brian. Welcome back to Neza Hwal Coyoto. It's the last time I'll say that. And whatever else, this uh, city is going to go down in Scottish football history, I'm sure, no matter what happens here today. Very interested, weren't we, Billy, to hear the comments of uh, Ian St John. And without beating about the bush, I think you agree with every word that Scotland have played badly. Well, Ian's, Ian's perfectly right in saying what, what, what he did say, John. Uh, we, we were talking about Friday the 13th. It's going to be unlucky for someone. It was certainly unlucky for Uruguay in the first minute and very lucky for Scotland. But we've not taken advantage of it. We haven't played well. We've played well against... Uh, Germany, we played well against Denmark, we made excuses for not winning, there's no excuses tonight. You know, goodness knows what's happening out there, the Uruguayans stayed in their dressing room for long enough before coming out, the referee was out a full two minutes before the team, and as the referee left the pitch at half-time, uh, incensed Uruguayan supporters were virtually trying to tear down a fence immediately in front of me, they were like lions, honestly, behind... Uh, a fence they were absolutely clawing away it was the most hostile reaction and still they haven't got a full compliment on the pitch as Gutierrez ambles on that was what happened at uh, half time uh, you see the referee was hustled away by FIFA officials the Uruguayan fans were shouting all sorts of things at him I can tell you none of them were complimentary second half is obviously going to kick off late Scotland by the way haven't uh, made any substitutions we're just running around the uh, Uruguayan side it appears that they are relying on the same 10 that uh, did manfully for them I suppose over 44 minutes in the first half and Uruguay immediately in possession with Ramos now Diogo and uh, not a very strong pass back it eventually gets uh, to Leighton by David Neri. And Scotland really have got to produce some spark from somewhere. It created very few openings. Perhaps the best of the half went to Steve Nicholl. Sterak tries to use his pace, but in fact it's a goal kick. Acevedo knocking it off uh, the legs of Sterak. Referee might well have a pretty torrid 45 minutes here. Especially if Scotland do score and Uruguay go a goal down. Cabrera. Francescoli beaten off uh, by Neri, who's uh, got a bit of a bang on his head for his troubles. Nice ball from McStay through to Aitken. He's uh, got it out this time to Sturrock. He slips Cabrera and gets in across. Sharp uh, took it down. There was a man actually behind him, but Strachan is still here in possession. Bundled off the ball by Pereira. So the first free kick of the half uh, goes to Alex Ferguson's side. 
And I'd like to know, Billy, what Alex Ferguson will have been saying to the team in the dressing room. I think one of the things you'll have told them, John, is that we tended to over-exaggerate the position at the back. We had four men marking one, and we didn't push onto them in midfield. And I think equally, I'll be trying to... It would have been trying to get through these players, but when they get to that dead ball line, they're a bit more accurate with the final ball. So come on, Scotland. Let's have a go. There's a good Scottish presence here in Meza. And I can tell you they will celebrate if Scotland go through to the second phase for the first time in their history. Teed up by here. Strachan, now Goff. And it just dribbles through there. An attempt at invention which misfired. Ramos loves running with the ball. Cheskin uses his strength to keep Neri at bay. And then he's made a good run down the right, so he's in possession once more. And this time it's from Cheskinley who's brought to crashing to the ground. There's going to be a booking for David Neri. Well, I think we have to say, uh, don't we, Billy, here, that uh, David Neri perhaps can have no complaints. No, I, I think the referee's right to have taken his name. Um, perhaps it, in reflection of that ordering off, John, I just wonder if the referee made a mistake pulling out that red card and then just went along with it. Neri then, 30 years of age yesterday. An unhappy moment there, but uh, Francescoli is still down on the ground. The linesman on our side of the pitch, by the way, has got his flag raised at the moment. Because one of the Uruguayan uh, medical team has wandered onto the pitch uninvited. And he's had to walk right across the pitch and you know, off it again. John, you know, you've got to admire the, the skills of Francescoli. You can understand why people pay so much money for him. He's been far more in evidence here than he was against Denmark, and here he is once more inside the area. And that was a pretty last-ditch tackle from Nickel that denied him. Francesco Lee is the uh, South American footballer of the year, who's just joined Racing Club of Paris for a staggering sum of money. And a couple of cars. Away by Miller. Sturrock lacking support for the moment, but now Sharp feeds Strachan. Aitken's made a very good run, and uh, so has McStay here. The defensive uh, duties done then by Acevedo. Neri draws it towards the edge of the area, but that's a meat and drink to Acevedo. Santin now. Ramos, who turns like a corkscrew, keeps possession as well. Oh, he's done well here, Ramos, and he's still going. Five minutes of the second half gone. Scotland nil, Uruguay nil. And Sturrock in a battle here. And, uh, he commits the offence, which produces a free kick to Uruguay. Scotland still unable to make their numerical advantage count for much. You have to say as well, Billy, there's been some very good Uruguayan defending, the, the legal stuff, and Gutierrez is uh, a fine player. He reminds me a bit of Roy McFarland for some reason. John, they've got very good players. The, the annoying thing about them is they've got this cynical side to them that uh, I think it destroys their game because they're much better than, than, than to involve themselves in fouls and needless kicking and things. And of course, Uruguay have won the World Cup on two occasions, in 1930 in their own country and again in 1950 when it was held in Brazil. And here's Sharp, and a chance maybe, if he can keep control there, but Santin robs him. Now Francescoli. Cabrera, inside Scottish territory. 
He's got nobody to use out on his left, so he has to use uh, Francescoli down the centre. And somehow he's managed to get it back to Santon, but there'll be a free kick. We still lack inspiration, John. I, I, I'm confessed to being a little bit surprised that we didn't alter the team lineup. Cooper? I think it's crying out for someone else. David Cooper's skillful on the ball. He'll get a bit of room today, and I think he could create problems for them. Sturrock kick from behind by Acevedo. And uh, you do think that Scotland somehow must contrive something from one of these free kicks. They've played it quickly. Here's Sturrock. He's offside, though. It won't count. It won't count. The Scottish flags are raised, but I think uh, even the most ambitious Scottish supporter knew there that uh, that was never going to count. The linesman had his flag up right away, John. I'm not convinced that uh, Paul Sturrock was offside when he began his run, though. No, no, there was I here, to be honest, Billy, but uh, the conviction in our voices was from the fact that the linesman did raise the flag immediately. The free kick was taken. Still bright and sunny here in Neza, but the sun hasn't really come out for Scotland as yet. They've got another free kick, but they're finding it very hard to uh, find a way through this Uruguayan web. And there's uh, the free kick conceded by Gutierrez. John, that was another scandalous challenge. I think we've got used to them, Billy. Even if the players out there haven't. And this time, Scotland have uh, got all the big fellas that they've uh, utilised today. Sharp and Goff, Neri, all up there. The flag's up again as Nickel this time tries to uh, nick it over the keeper. The linesman once more had raised the flag early. Here in Neza, it's Scotland nil, Uruguay nil, and Uruguay have been down to ten men from the first minute of the match when their fullback Batista was sent off after hacking down Gordon Strachan. A quite dramatic decision by the French referee, but Uruguay have lived with it. It does seem to happen so often that a side playing against ten men finds it hard to find a way through. The ten men all seem to get inspiration from somewhere, John, but really it shouldn't happen. I mean, we've got uh, 11 international players out there. We should be able to cope with this situation. Goff. Uh, Sharp will go up with Gutierrez, who wins it. Now Nickel. No problems for Victor Hugo Diogo. Scotland have 35 minutes left to clinch that place in the next round. Remember, an appetising match awaits the winners here today. It's Argentina in Puebla next Monday. Uruguay only need to draw, though. Scotland have to win. Strachan and Sharp wants it on. Aitken will drive it in, but wide. You just wonder how the heat will affect both sides, John. I mean, the Uruguayans possibly can cope with it that little bit better than we Scots. This is the first time that uh, we've seen heat, heat like this at, uh, at Netzer, John. I just wonder how the Scots will cope with it. Roy Aitken, unable there to add to the one goal he scored for his country. Predictably, Uruguay again slowing the game down. But here... Is Santin who can't get it through to Ramos? William Miller beckons McStay to come and help him. The youngster from Celtic finds Gordon Strachan out on this right touch line where Goff is making a run ahead of him, and so here is Sterrick inside the area. 
and uh, Goff's cross cut out again by Cabrera. The ball placed for Strachan to take the corner, which he'll do quickly. And if he's accurate here, there could have been danger for Uruguay. He's got it back, so a second chance. Oh, and that's a good-looking cross. Right across the face of the goal, I think Diogo might just have got a deflected touch. Driven in, and uh, problems here, maybe, as Graham Sharp goes up and tries to tee up Goff. Alves scrambles open to make the save. Another opportunity squandered. Well, uh, again, it was a good opportunity, but not a good final shot at all. The ball gets played back, John, and... Richard Goff was a good position to score there. Well, the Uruguayan manager is up off the bench. You can't see that, uh, I know, at the moment, uh, but just to inform you that he is there by the touchline and has had to be sent back by a FIFA official. Only the other day we saw the Paraguayan coach sent off because he got too involved. Omar Boras, mind you, must be an anxious man at this moment. So they take their football so seriously in Uruguay after they've been beaten by six goals by Denmark. Boras's family did receive death threats. Uh, there is a police guard on his home in Montevideo. And his phone is being tapped, we're told, as well. So that's uh, how serious the situation is for the Uruguayan coach. Midway inside Uruguay's half. Neri. Booked a few moments ago. This time plays the ball up towards Goff and it's away by Pereira. Only as far as Strachan though. Perhaps a bit more promising this for Scotland as Sturrock is found inside the area. Strachan again. The deflection was off Acevedo. Strachan claims that it certainly struck the defender's hand. The French referee is not impressed. And uh, there looks to be a bit of an injury there to... I think it's uh, Cabrera. He's feeling his arm. And he's just gone down, actually, I think it's Pereira. And the referee, again, is going to have problems. He's calling for the stretcher. Well, Pereira went down there with his clutching his arm with nobody anywhere near him. Yeah, I think he hurt his elbow off someone's jaw join. Booze all around the ground. We've seen it so many times with South American countries. Who will ever forget uh, Mr Ratin back in England in 1966? And the whole of the Uruguayan squad, I think, is just about on the pitch there. Certainly all their medical experts. Sara Leggi, a substitute, uh, has been warming up. I wonder what the bets are that uh, Mr Pereira will pick himself up and be OK. I would imagine he'll be all right once he gets a touch of that magic sponge on. Well, he is actually uh, going off the pitch, I think. Yes. He's left the field, so play can continue. Surrounded by cameramen, doctors, probably even the local dentist is there. Strachan now. Miller's come up uh, to join in the attack, and Scotland must produce something here. McStay, oh, lovely cross from McStay, and it was Aiken. And uh, it was Sturrock, in fact, who got in the final shot. The ball bounced invitingly into Alves's hands. I always think, Billy, that uh, any substitute needs uh, about half an hour to get into a game. And uh, if Alex Ferguson is to make a substitution, now would be the ideal time. Yes, you've got to give your substitute a chance to achieve something, John, particularly when you've got two to use. Pereira is back on the pitch. Uruguay are up from nine to ten men again. Here's Strachan outside the area, tries to create space for himself. It cannoned off a defender, back to Nickel. Strachan again, he's worked manfully, Strachan. And, oh, yes, he's 
Carter passed his marker there superbly. Oh, it went past everybody. Still here where is Sturrock. Drives it in. All to no avail. Now McStay. Uruguay are defending tigerously with a chance here for Graham Sharp to make a name for himself. Oh, and this time Nickel is the offender and Stevie Nickel is going to be booked. The yellow card, the second shown to a Scottish player. He uh, brought down Santin then. So now we've had two bookings, Neri and Nickel. On the Scottish side, ascending up Batista and another booking Cabrera for Uruguay. Scotland must not get drawn into these angry confrontations. No, that's for sure, John. You know, we still need that little bit of inspiration. We've had a chance or two, but unfortunately seem to have fallen to the lad who's going to miss them on the day. But uh, we've got to keep our composure. We've not got to let ourselves be drawn into anything nasty. Ramos will just keep that ball in play. It wasn't a strong header from Arthur Alberston. He's only got Francesco Lee up with him in the box. Just outside it here is Santin. And that's beyond Francesco Lee, who was not pleased by the pass. And Jim Bett is warming up. David Cooper also. David Cooper down there. He might well be the player to come on. Sterek will keep it in. And he's got three or four men to aim at in the penalty area. The only one he can find is Barrios of Uruguay. Ramos now Aitken after Goff's interception but they've won it back again with Pereira I hate to keep reminding you but Uruguay only need a draw here to qualify for the next phase against Argentina there is David Cooper the Glasgow Rangers uh, midfield man come winger might well come into the action here very shortly and how Scotland I think might need him Sterrett goes up it's falling down here for uh, Max Stay but the free kick is given against the youngster from the Glasgow Celtic it must be awful to be a Scot uh, Billy at this moment uh, so frustrating well, to be honest, John, my nerves are going, and uh, th those players must be suffering a bit. They know they're not playing as well as they can, and they must be suffering a bit out there. Yes, I mean, in the last three World Cup finals, they've needed to win the final game to get through, and on each occasion, they've only managed to draw. Um, this one's going to be a bigger disaster than those, John, because uh, we're up against ten men here for what amounts to the full game. And Strachan is flattened, but uh, the referee didn't think there was anything wrong with it at that time. So Scotland do come away down the left-hand side with Arthur Olveston. Preferred today to Maurice Malpass. And uh, he's done well here. Oh, Sturrock almost turning inside Gutierrez. But he's uh, defended admirably. And on the break here is Francesco Lee. And there could be problems for Scotland. Santin just had to slow it down. Aitken did a marking job on him and tells him to get up. But the challenge wasn't so fierce as to necessitate him staying down. Scotland could have been caught on the break there. This is what we've got to watch out, John. We're so intent now in getting a goal. We've got to get that goal to get through that uh, we're starting to leave little holes at the back. Meanwhile, uh, Cooper still warms up. Ramos prepares to take the free kick for Uruguay. And it's a real indication of Uruguayan policy at the moment that they have only two men inside the penalty area to try and get on the end of this free kick from Ramos. It's away by Neri, comfortably. Charlie Nicholas, by the way, is also uh, stretching his limbs down there. We just need somebody who can score a goal. Sounds so simple, doesn't it? But uh, it's not proving so. Even against ten men. Free kick. 
Mary, who's been booked, was the uh, man who brought Ramos down. Charlie Nicholas, injured in the first game against uh, Denmark, has done well to be even on the substitutes bench here. Well, we've talked about the place where the Scots stayed, John, saying that it's the place where men become gods. Charlie comes on and score, he'll become a god. That's fighting Scottish talk. If they could just get that one elusive goal. But for the moment, it's Uruguay, and they have a free kick with Ramos, and a clear header, late to save his country. That the most, well, the easiest chance of the game so far, and Cabrera must be kicking himself because he could well have written himself into Uruguayan history here. Magnificent save it was, John, but, uh, you know what? If you were a big lad going in at the end of that, you'd be disappointed he didn't finish up there. But all credit to Jim Lee, he's kept us in the game. Nickel tries to start uh, Sturrock away. He's going to be offside, according to the linesman on this side. The flag is still up, and the referee has seen it now. And he's left rolling on the ground, is Sturrock. By the challenge there, the referee doesn't seem to want to know. Well, one, I didn't think he was offside, and two, I'm sure a Uruguayan defender, Diogo, did something he shouldn't have done. I think there was an accidental clash between a, a face and a, an elbow there, John. We're halfway through the second half in Neza, a match so vital, but it's Scotland nil, Uruguay nil. Mary beats off Francesco Lee, Goff does well. David Cooper is about to come on. In fact, it might well be a double substitution because Charlie Nicholas looks as though he will as well. McStay just overran it. Free kick against Aitken. So now Scotland will make those two substitutions. And what an important 22 minutes remain for Charlie Nicholas. Number 19 and David Cooper, number 21. Their task is obvious. Sturrock is one to come off. And the other one to come off will be Steve Nicholl. Scotland desperately need a goal from Charlie Nicholas or from anybody else for that matter. Can they do it, Billy? Well, looking at it, John, we'll get this in advance of 20 minutes now. We've got two players that are capable of scoring. Um, we've got to hope. I think it's hope rather than say we're, we can do it, John. It's definitely hope now. It will certainly be fascinating to see what sort of influence on the game David Cooper can have. Such a talented wide player. Sometimes he frustrates. Oh, now Uruguay have waited their moment and uh, have decided they want to make a substitution as well. Mario Sarrera, Leggy is the player coming on. And uh, Venancio Ramos is the player who takes his leave. The hug for Ramos, Sarra Leggy replaces him, and uh, he has worked very hard, Ramos. He's a talented young player, John. Um, this big lad, Sarra Leggy, looks to be more like a, a midfield player, more of a defensive type player. Francesco Lee trying to beat off Goff, just so. Here's Cabrera, who's just missed one chance. Cooper is in the action. He's gone 25 yards. Nicholas. Augustin. Now, well, let's see what David Cooper can do. Two defenders in front of him. He'll run at them. And he'll get the corner. Nineteen minutes remain. Scotland nil, Uruguay nil. Hitting hard and low, oh, and it went straight past uh, Goff. We've got it away once more. Strachan finds Cooper, lovely ball. 
Cooper tries to get past Barrios and uh, he actually ran straight into him there and I think the referee to be honest was justified in that decision it wasn't a free kick so sent in now for Uruguay Uruguay were many people's favourites uh, here at the start of this World Cup. They're the South American champions. In all honesty, in their three games, they've perhaps been let down by their own approach to the game and the fact they've had players sent off each time. It's their own indiscipline, John, that's cost them, cost them dearly because really they can play, but uh, the indiscipline about the team is astonishing. And there you see a perfect example of it again. Uh, time wasting there produces another yellow card. Gutierrez Barrios the captain was there as well well the referee I suspect knew he was in for a tough time but I wondered if he knew how tough but stay he was caught as well there and the free kick is given against Cabrera Uruguay, by the way, are warming up another substitute as well. Vega, uh, an out-and-out -out defender, would you believe? Miller hoists the free kick towards Charlie Nicholas. Good defending by Pereira. Aitken back to Strachan. Comes inside this uh, time, trying to find a way through. Lovely ball for Nicholas, who was onside. Rifles it back to McStay. He can't keep the shot down. Another chance goes begging. It would have taken a good shot, John, but you always like to see a shot hit the target from there, don't you? We saw one yesterday, didn't we? Yeah, I don't think we'll see a better goal in the tournament, John. Not the one scored by Josimar for Brazil. Just 16 minutes left. Alveston out to Cooper, who stayed out on that touchline. He's got to attack them. Alex Ferguson was saying before the match that uh, Scotland were going to attack down the left. Well, Cooper's got a real chance to make a name for himself here. Glory, in fact. Saralegi, the Uruguayan substitute. Good skill by Diogo, but the ball's out of play, and unnecessarily he kicks it away. And Diogo has already been booked in this match. The referee could have taken stern action against him there. And the latest score from Carretero. We've got no goals here, but they've got two now up at uh, Carretero, and it is Denmark 2, West Germany 0. So it looks as though Denmark are clearly going to win the group. And uh, if this one stays a draw, West Germany would finish in second place, Uruguay would be third, and Scotland sadly would be fourth. There's a Francescoli. So good at uh, shielding the ball inside the area as well, and Francescoli still there. He thought he was brought down. The referee and nobody else I don't think did. Nicholas receives from Cooper and finds Strachan with a lovely ball. Now then, can Gordon Strachan run at the defence and do something here? Aitken onside, chance for Scotland, it's gone beyond. Diogo contentedly puts it into the crowd. I think Charlie was looking for Roy Aitken to pull that one back to him, John. He'd made himself a nice little bit of space inside the penalty area. He'd be disappointed it didn't come back to him. Cooper takes the corner. And Sharp's in there, it's away by Acevedo. A little flick from Sharp almost got Alves out. Billy, McT he, Billy McNeil's heart stopped beating for a moment, I'm sure. John, I don't think I've got a heart left, you know that, and Manel's have gone as well. I'm still hoping to hear you sing at the end of this one. But uh, only 14 minutes left. 
for Scotland to get that one so important but so elusive goal. Saraleghi here. He's only got Francesco Lee in front of him. He finds him, though, and Francesco Lee inside the area. Holds things up. Here's Diogo, who's uh, got a yellow card, by the way, from that uh, incident, and that's his second yellow card of the tournament, which means he'll miss the next match. Assuming, of course, Uruguay have a next match. The Scottish contingent here hope they don't. And here's Francesco Lee. The ball taken cleanly from him by Neri. Goff has a chance to make some ground here. And, uh, asking a lot of Strachan now. And again, he's found Goff. He's played some neat football, Strachan. And this will be a corner off the legs of Acevedo. I think you'll will this one into the net, Billy. Well, I hope someone gets it in, John. Really, we really need that now. We're, we're, we're starting to almost give up in desperation. That must never happen. Cooper takes the corner kick. And it's away only as far as McStay. That's a real up and under. And Gary Owen. Cooper. Fights off Barrios, comes inside, and the captain has done well to get back and retrieve the situation. Nicholas chases him and catches him. Handball against David Cooper. And you can certainly sense the frustration down there. Looking at it, John, we've got 12 minutes left. Um, it's important that we just keep our heads. You know, a goal in the last minute's worth the same as a goal right now for us. Again, the referee has to tell Santin to get up and we'll take the throw in. So obvious the delaying tactics of these Uruguayans. Now, what's the bet? Saraleghi will leave the ball. No, in the end, he does take the throw to Francesco Lee, and there are now less than 11 minutes left. The precise build up the ball is worked out again to Cooper. So much resting on David Cooper's shoulders here. The feeling is he's the man who could create the winner. But not with that sort of a ball. It was straight to Saraleghi. Barrios. Now Pereira. There's a glance at the huge scoreboard here, tells us that there are exactly 10 minutes left for Scotland to stay in the World Cup. Well, they don't have the ball at the moment. Santin does. It's been one back, though, and lost. Aitken battling and uh, winning the ball for Scotland. Now then, Gordon Strachan. What a time this could be for the little man from Manchester United to do something famous for his country. He's hit a lovely long ball. That's a peach of a pass out to Cooper. Back for Olveston. Scotland might as well throw everything into this. Goff gets in a header, but it's knocked away again by Acevedo. Neri. Scotland really have to throw caution to the winds almost here to get that goal. I know there's the danger of uh, slipping up at the back. But now there's no other alternative, Billy. John, we can forget about losing him at the back. At the moment we are out of the, the World Cup, we've got to get ourselves back in over this last eight or nine minutes. We've got to have a real go, and if, if we fail, then we'll fail. It's eight minutes and 40 seconds on the clock. Uruguay wants to make a substitution.
And that'll be a free kick against Aitken. Alzamendi will be the uh, player who just come on for Uruguay when the referee spots that uh, they want to make the substitution. And you can bet they'll take their time over it. They can't get him on for the moment. Well, a huge kick from Alves. There he is underneath it. Cooper. Nicholas ahead of him, so is Sharp. Well, Graham Sharp has uh, battled alone for much of uh, today in many ways. He's not had a lot of support and he's not had a lot of supply. How precious one of those goals that he scores for Everton could be. But here's Francesco Lee inside the area and Willie Miller gives away the corner kick. So it's Uruguay's turn to threaten. I've been so impressed by Fran Francesco Lee, John. He's played a lone battle up there. He's held the ball up. He's attacked got his defender with it. And he's given his team an awful lot of rest. He's had a tremendous game. Now Uruguay, in fact, are taking Francesco Lee off. Now that's uh, something of a surprising decision, Billy. Well, I think they've said he's worked hard enough, John. It's a surprise for me to see him come off. But he's been up there on his own, so perhaps... Uh, this. The lad is coming on as a mend, he's quite quick and perhaps they're back on a little bit of tiredness in the Scottish defence at this stage. Jim Layton is uh, remonstrating with the referee there because of the time that Uruguay have taken to take Francesco Lee off and to bring Al Zamendi on. But they are past masters, real craftsmen at time wasting. And Scotland have only six and a half minutes to do something about staying in the 1986 World Cup. Saralegi receives from the corner and they'll keep the ball in their possession as long as they can here's Alzamendi pair of fresh legs across in away only as far as Nelson Gutierrez Alzamendi scored a goal against West Germany he won't score there Sharp brings it away can't find Nicholas though frustration is becoming exasperation Santin has found Elza Mendy down that right touch line. He'll run at Willie Miller here. Only Neri otherwise is up there. Elza Mendy's got nobody to cross it to. So he'll try and turn past Neri. Can't do so. Five and a half minutes left. And I can tell you Billy McNeil is jumping up and down in his seat here. So, so frustrating for the next player who wants to get out there and do it himself. Now Aitken. There is still time. But not a lot. Nicholas is robbed and Uruguay got the chance to waste more time by bringing the ball away down this touchline. Alzamendi almost trips up over his own feet and runs at Neri and gets in a very weak shot indeed. But it won't really matter to Uruguay. You mustn't forget that a point is good enough for them to go through to play Argentina in the next round. Cooper comes inside Diogo. Now oh, come on, David Cooper. Tries to get past Gutierrez and the ball has gone out of play. John, I'm a Scotsman and uh, really this is a game that we should have won. We can make no... We can make no excuses for not winning this game, but, you know, I've got to have a whole lot of respect for, for the way, if I take apart the delaying tactics, I've got to have a lot of respect for the way Uruguay have coped. I think that's true. Gutierrez there just threw the ball over the top of his own goalkeeper to waste a few more seconds. And I'm sure, like you, Ian St John is dying a thousand deaths back in the studio in London. John, we thought we might lose out in this group and gain a lot of respect. I think we're losing a lot of that respect in this match. I'm sure the Scottish press will be critical, and especially if Uruguay win the match. With ten men. And uh, there are now three and a half minutes left. Scotland nil, Uruguay nil here in Nessa. 
and it'll be looked upon as nasty Nezif for Scotland, I'm afraid, if they don't get this one vital goal. The crossing by Aitken, Goff's at the far side, chance for Richard Goff, maybe. Sharp tries to tee it up, it might still come. Alviston drives it across the face of the goal, and you can sense the Scottish mood by the expression on Alviston's face. His head dropped, he knew that a good chance had been wasted. Well, again, it was a good chance, John. It just needed a little bit of composed finishing here. And now the Uruguayan flags are beginning to wave. And again, wasting time by not playing that ball out of the area. The referee is going to produce another card, and it's a yellow card this time for the goalkeeper, Alves. They won't care how many yellow cards they pick up if they go through. You wonder if they'll have a team to put on the field if they do get through, John. Well, Alves, Diogo, Cabrera have all been booked. Batista has been sent off. Diogo definitely misses the next match. If Uruguay hang on for another two and a quarter minutes. And uh, a free kick has been given against Neri for the push on Alzamendi, who kicks the ball away. Exactly two minutes left on the scoreboard. Alzamendi refuses to get up, and Roy Aitken is getting very cross about it. Understandably, it must be very difficult to keep you cool. Well, John, as I've said already, those lads are disappointed that they're not in front of the game, and the frustration is beginning to show. It's beginning to look as though England are going to be Britain's only representatives in the last 16 here in Mexico. A minute and a half. Saralegi has the ball and gives it away. Now then, Aitken. Down the line, Nicholas. Inside, McStay. Millis come up. They might as well all come up now. Cooper. A minute and 12 seconds left to produce something. He drives the cross against Diogo. McStay. The ball has got to come inside the penalty area. Nicholas. Back to McStay. He can't do it. Now Neri. 21 players inside the Uruguayan half. There are 50 seconds on the clock. Cooper tackled by Diogo. There must surely be a little bit of time added on as Neri hits a screamer! Oh, so close to glory, David Neri. Well, I thought that was it, Joanna. Tremendous strike. Wasn't far away. Probably our best effort. Goals really in the whole match. And it's taken 89 minutes to come. Uruguayan bench are on their arms, they're cheering, they're waving, they're sensing a victory that will go down in history in Montevideo. It's got a victory, of course, on the day, but it will be classified as a victory once that referee blows his final whistle, because the draw here will be suffice to take Argentina and Uruguay into what I'm sure is going to be a battle in Puebla next week. But let's not count our chickens, Scotland aren't out of it yet. They've got to win the ball, and they've got to create something because time is up on the big scoreboard. And they don't even have possession. The Uruguayans are frantically screaming at the French referee to blow his whistle. The Uruguay have a free kick. The sounds of time are surely running out for Scotland, Billy. Well, it's one of the most disappointing times in uh, Scottish football history, John. We, we came here full of hopes. We've got a great break in the first minute, a player sent off, and... We've not been good enough to take advantage of it. I must say, there are quite wild scenes down in front of the Uruguayan bench. All their substitutes, all their training staff are up off the bench. Now, can Scotland stage one last effort? Neri urges everybody forward. He kicks the ball forward, but the whistle is gone. Scotland are out of the World Cup. You can see the Uruguayan reaction. They fought with 10 men for 89 minutes and they have qualified for the next phase with just two points. They'll play Argentina while Scotland go home. Billy McNeil. 
Well, John, we came here. All we had to do was win one match against ten men. We couldn't do it. So we've no right to think that we were unlucky. And indeed, we've probably got what we deserve today. Disconsolate Scottish players that troop from the field, many of them finding it unable to shake hands with their Uruguayan opponents. Although there we do see a couple, Gordon Strachan, the odd exchange of shirts. But you get the feeling that there isn't a lot of love lost down there between the players. Uruguay have stalled throughout uh, much of this game. There are aspects of their football you have to admire. But sadly, the news here in Neza is that Friday the 13th has turned out to be not only unlucky, but a black day in Scottish football history. They failed to beat the 10 men of Uruguay. And that is why I'm afraid I have to tell you for the last time here from Neza that Uruguay go through. They play Argentina in Puebla on Monday. Scotland go home. From Neza, we now take a break. Join us again with the views of the panel. Welcome back to you. A disastrous night then for Scottish football and Ian St John is just waiting to give his views and we have to wait just a moment for those because first we're going to catch up on the action of that other game in Group E, Denmark against West Germany. Our commentator in Carretero is Jerry Harrison. The West Germans, they're in white. Gordon Olsen driving into the air, he goes down, it's a penalty! The Danish captain's run from the back has earned them a penalty Two minutes before the half-time break. Here's Olsen. So smooth. Here comes Jan Molby. On the right is Frank Arneson, and they're wide open, with Ericsson getting in the middle. John Ericsson, the second for Denmark. Well, Arnton did the spade work. Ericsson, the substitute, pokes it in. Edel. Forward to Rummenigge. Rummenigge, a great turn. And another good save by Lars Ho. Rummenigge in character there. But the goalkeeper did a superb job again to come out and close it all down so fast. Oh, there's problems here. Certainly dramas on the ground. Now, there's going to be trouble for Arneson because he's already had one yellow card. If he gets another yellow card, he's gone, and I'm afraid he is. How absolutely unnecessary. Which means he misses the next game, which will be against Spain. Well, the group table then, the final one in that group, shows that Denmark and West Germany, uh, they have qualified. And uh, it's a little muddling there, but uh, Uruguay uh, finish in third place and qualify. The four old Scots, uh, they finish last. And now we know that the matches then that make up this last 16 in the 1986 World Cup. Starting on Sunday evening, Mexico against Bulgaria and Russia against Belgium. And then on Monday, uh, Brazil against Poland. And Argentina now against Uruguay. That's hope, and it should have been, we believe, of course, <coughs> against Scotland. Next Tuesday, it's Italy against France. What a match that should be. And Morocco against West Germany. And then next Wednesday, England against Paraguay. That's the kickoff at 7 o'clock in the evening, incidentally. And Denmark against Spain. Then Thursday and Friday, no games before we come to the quarterfinals then next weekend. Well, what about Scotland? Ian St. John, I suppose you could repeat almost <coughs> what you said at half time, couldn't you? I've nothing to say. <laughs> I'm to we might I'm be totally slightly embarrassed if that's the case. Speechless because I, we, we just cannot make any excuses for that at all. I, I think it was uh, the worst performance I've ever seen from a Scottish side. Uh, and I don't care what they say about Alex Ferguson and his team he picked and all the rest of it. Any 11 Scots going out there tonight should have won that game against 10 men. 89 minutes to play. And it was the way we played. We had one effort in the first half and one shot near the end from David Neri. Two shots. Did you remember their goalkeeper no, making a save? Fine. I don't remember the goalkeeper doing anything. I think the thing that most people are going to find baffling, if I can stick with you for a moment, is that how well you'd played against Denmark and West Germany. I mean, it's a complete mystery. How can we play well and look aside? And I know there's been a few changes tonight, but how can we look a good side and then go out there tonight and look completely disjointed, and what really annoyed me was that we're standing around and we're 10 yards off people, 20 yards off people, 
And you say, hey, lads, come on, we've got an extra man. Let's at least hustle them, let's try and work them, put some pressure on them. No, everybody's standing around. I don't know, maybe I've got it wrong sitting here. Maybe the heat and the altitude and everything affects people and they can't do it. It would appear tonight that we just could not do it. We've played as if we'd lead boots on. I think the thing that upset me most was they didn't even try and go by anybody. And we, this World Cup has, has produced every team that, that takes people on and beats the man, especially going into the last third, gets good crosses in the ball, you know, gets extra people going wide and get good balls in the box, you get goals. And I tell you, what, Scotland have got so many talented ball players that everyone is good on the ball and comfortable on the ball, but they didn't try and go by anyone. I think, and that's, also, I think and that's what disappointed me. I think also uh, the thing that disappointed me, and we got to look at Scotland really with Denmark now and look at the, the, the two comparisons matches. There, the comparisons. Brian, of but I've ju we've just watched a match there where uh, the boy has come from the back, and I still believe, and I think Alan Hansen's a great player. I'm sure the two boys, Neary and Miller, are very good players, but I think that somewhere along the line, Alan Hansen should have been on that side so that. We can sure. have people coming from the back sure. to pass and play. We had Willie Miller, we had the boy Neary, who were really playing as two spur men. I know. So all of a sudden, instead of having 11 v 10 advantage, yeah. Uruguay had 10-9. But, get, I mean, i got to say, I saw Uruguay playing, and yes, they have a lot of bad parts of their game, but they can yeah. play. Well, um, do you know when uh, Alex selected the, the squad, the first thing he said was, I think I've made a mistake, I've left Alan Hansen out. He said that. Now, I think tonight proved you know, that, that mistake you know, was a, a... Because yeah. you're talking about players who can play ah. and comfortable with the ball. You're talking he's about the best defenders. Of, he's you're best. talking about defenders. He Speed, a, well, you left Speedy as your best player and you've left him here. Let's be Speedy, fair. Speedy, I'll tell you player. what, Speedy in that game tonight, the way they were, no. he would have been on the he's, field two minutes. match winners. He'd have been you on two match minutes. Winners I think the that's where you've slipped up. I think we, also... I think also because we can't score a goal. I think also, when you look back at the game, there was a lot of balls dropping and everyone seemed to fall to Uruguayan. It, and I, I still say, and we said it the other night, when England were going to play, they had to make something happen. That's and I right. felt tonight there are the Uruguayans made something happen, the and the Scots didn't. The same thing about Big Sharp. You've had him in there, really. And, you know, if he, if he doesn't head the ball, really, you know, he's a waste, really, a waste of a player. You know, I thought that Sturrock up front did quite well. He was the only player who looked to get in behind people yeah. and make things happen. But we still but, we still didn't get anybody coming through from the back to create the, the, the extra man advantage, to get people behind. The second half, there was space in behind the left back every time. Mm -hmm. And it, was, it wasn't really exploited. Well, the big lad, Goff, who'd played well in, in early games, and we thought, well, what a good, you know, added addition to attack he is coming up. Tonight there, when you're talking about that space, Brian, you know, with a lot of striking, he never was able to come into the game at no. all. I mean, it was total disaster. <laughs> Total disaster. Total disaster. You've had the last word. Saint, commiserations to you and to all Scots. Our thanks to Michael and to Brian as well. And that's it for tonight. There's no live action tomorrow, but there is a special World Cup programme tomorrow afternoon on ITV at 3 o'clock, and it's going to include boxing. That's the WBC lightweight championship between the champion Hector Camacho and the former champion Edwin Rosario. Uh, that's from Madison Square Garden in New York. There's gymnastics too from the Crystal Palace. And then when we get to talking World Cup football, we're going to step back 16 years to Mexico 1970 and bring back to our studio our ITV World Cup panel of that year, 1970. The year that Malcolm Allison got the nation talking. This was Big Mal 16 years ago. We're going to bring back Derek Dugan as well. And of course, needless to say, we're going to bring back Paddy Creran, 16 years younger, but as strong in his views about the game now as he was then. And Bob McNabb, he's going to be here too, flying in specially from Canada for this World Cup reunion. And that'll happen at 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. And Alec Ferguson has just announced it's his last game as Scotland manager. It's a bad note to end on. From us all, good night. Wild now pickering for once Palace a pen back and Wood has to flip it over the top from Nick Pickering. Wild was causing the initial problem and Pickering hit it well. Benison. A lot. Murphy. That was much more direct. Some real tussling here by Trevor Aylott with three defenders around him. The thought of handball by Chisholm. And in the end, it dropped for Murphy to hammer it. Sunderland are through to the third round.
Five successive draws in the first division and another here tonight in none too easy circumstances. Len Ashurst has preached the gospel of resilience to his rebuilt side and Palace could not break them down. A goalless draw here, but the two goals from Roger Wilde to one from Stan Cummins in the first leg, the decisive statistics. Now the rest of the night's football news from Steve Ryder. Yes, we'll start with those other Milk Cup games, all second round, second leg matches. Aston Villa 3, Scunthorpe 1, Villa going through 6-3 on aggregate. Bradford City 0, Newcastle 1, Newcastle through 4-1. Derby 1, Ipswich 1, Ipswich through 5-3. Everton 4, Sheffield United 0, Everton go through 6-2. Leeds 3, Gillingham 2, Leeds going through 5-3. Norwich 6, Preston North End 1, 9, 4 on aggregate to Norwich. Oxford United 3, Blackburn 1, that after extra time, Oxford going through 4, 2.